Hello, this is Shane Zabo with NICS. Welcome to my video showing off some of the basic features available in Spire Systems software, one of the business management software solutions that we sell and support. We also use Spire extensively in-house to manage our cash flow, inventory, payroll, and to produce business intelligence for decision making. Okay, so we're going to start by opening up our sample company in Spire. Uh, and in this uh, company list, you can see me opening up here. Uh, you can see that we have several different companies within the list under one license. And so one license gets you as many companies as you want. Uh, and so I'm logging into the sample company Inspire Health. And you can see it gives us multiple locations to choose from. So it does give you different profit centers for different locations. And the date that we want to log in on. Log in on today. Okay, so you can see when we logged in that we had some message windows pop up. We've got an alerts window and a recurring transactions due window. The alerts window gives us some uh, sales or customer notes, among other modules, and we can assign them to individual users from the user list. And then the same with the recurring GL transactions. So you can see in here, uh, in our account list, we have our divisions and uh, segments enabled and I can search for for example cost of goods accounts and select them there okay so moving on to our user settings the first one of the first things we'll do once we once we create a new user is give them permissions to the different modules they need and uh, Spire gives us very granular permissions allowing us to really select the things that we want in each module as opposed to just turning a module on or off. Uh, so we can give them general ledger without year end and so forth. And then also we have very good searchability within this. And so if we're looking for a specific setting such as default warehouse, we can just search for warehouse and that will show us all the related settings uh, and the related modules for warehousing. Another example would be maybe um, sales territory which again, we can search for territory and see all the related territory settings. And then now you can see that we are in our sales module. And inside the sales module, uh, we can pop that out by double clicking on it and have it be a separate window. And then within this window, uh, Spire lets us really uh, customize the user interface to whatever degree we need including picking the columns we want, picking the widths of the columns, and uh, the, the, the location of the columns in relation to each other. So I'm just going to go through here and uncheck some of the things that I don't want to see. Uh, and obviously this could be different per user, and it would save per user uh, as their preference. So we'll turn a couple of those off, and then maybe, uh, maybe I want my order date in front of my customer number, so I can reorder that if I choose to. And then change the uh, the columns a as I see fit for their size. So I can shrink that one down a little bit, make it a little easier to read, and take off uh, batch because I don't need that. Okay, so now you can see at the top of each of these windows that we've got an export feature. Okay, and that just pops straight into Excel like we expected allowing us to further manipulate it as we need to or update it and import it back in. You can see we've got a date range there, some 2016 and some 2015 for the required date. So I can come in here and add a filter. To show only required dates uh, from 2015. So we'll just go down to required date. And we'll say it is before January 1st, 2016. And now you can see we've updated our list. Which we can then export if we want with a new filter on it. And there we go. Now we have a uh, truncated list that only shows 2015 required dates. 
So a, a quick overview of how filters work and, and how they affect your export view. Now we're going to switch over to our items tab here. So this shows us all of the items and all of the sales orders currently. And so very handy features in here where I can search for an inventory type. So you can see we've got a vendor or pardon me, a manufacturer there, Precore, and all the, all the orders that have Precore in them. Or I can search for a customer and see all the orders I have for a customer. And then from within that, um, I can click on the pencil and, and edit any of these sales orders directly. So no going going back out and then and then finding sales orders and going in to browse them. We can link from module to module. Okay, so here we're going to create a new order, which we can do from the little arrow to specific type, or just hit the plus, and it'll give us our default order type. So for this user, that's a sales order. And now the first thing we will do is pick our customer. So we can click on the magnifying glass to browse our customer list. And this is very much the customer module that pops up. And so from within here, I can edit uh, customers using the pencil. I can um, create a new customer with the plus sign if I need to. So there's editing an existing customer, creating a new customer by hitting the plus sign. So all from within the sales module and not needing to, to back out to the customer module. And then finding customers in here is, is very straightforward as most things are in Spire. By using the search, I can uh, type in a customer and see filtered search results. Or I can actually just start typing when I open it up and not even use the search. It will, if I just hit EVER, it'll bring me to the, to the first result for that. So now let's take a look at that customer, Evergreen Ventures. So we can open customer directly out of the sales order. You saw that open customer button I pressed there. So we see we've got an Ella Olson and we've got a 604-276 phone number for that company. So I can use any of these criteria to search with. So instead of browsing, I can just start typing the name and you can see it's giving me an autocomplete as I type, type each letter. So there's the 428 customer code. But alternatively, I could have searched by, say, their phone number. So 604-276, and there it is. Or by Ella, or by Olson. So anything in that customer record is going to give me results in my query. So very easy to find and, and search for customers. Moving on to adding items to our sales order. We can click again on the magnifying glass to browse. And then this is going to work the same way as far as searching. So I can type COC and, and get my coconut there. Or I can put it in the filter and have it filter the results. Um, either way will work. Or I could even come in and just filter all my raw material. And now I'll only see inventory that's raw materials. And there's my coconut again. And of course, I can click on the pencil and edit that directly without backing out to the inventory module. And of course, I can export that. If I wanted, say, a list of my raw materials, I can quickly dump that out to Excel and see exactly what I've got there. Or I could just type in the same as I did with the customer, begin typing it in the field, and it'll give me an autocomplete. So we'll put some coconut in there. So next we are going to add a another item just to show you a feature that is fairly unique to Spire with using math inside of the fields on the order. So you can see I've got 274.50 as my cost. Maybe I just want to add 20% to that so I can multiply by 1.2 and it will give me a warning if I have a warning set on that for low margin, which it did. Let's set it to 40% margin. So we'll multiply that by 1.4. There's our 40% and it's not giving me an error anymore. Uh, alternatively, I know when we add up our hours on our invoices, we often do that in the field, 5 plus 5 plus 6 plus 9, and that's the total hours. And so a handy little feature that uh, 
isn't talked about very much where you can actually do operation mathematical operations within the fields. And then next we are going to take a look at our kitted items. So we're going to add a new filter. Our type is kitted inventory. Okay, so there we can see our four different kitted items available in this inventory. So we're going to take one of these Inspire kettlebells and take a look at it. So we'll go on to the edit and then we'll scroll over to our components tab, which is only available with kitted and production items, manufactured items. So we can see we've got all of our components there of the kit. So we'll put that on our invoice. And then it pops up as soon as we pick it and lets us pick all or none or components of and change the quantity of the components of the kit, which is very handy. And then it explodes it out onto the order, including back orders if there are any. Okay, so now what we're going to look at is our price matrix. As you can see right now we're on our, our Greek yogurt blueberry bars, 48 packs. And we're in the price matrix. We're going to add some conditions. So where the Spire price matrix really shines is, is most price matrices will only allow you to modify by quantity, but this allows us to pick a customer as well for our uh, price matrix, and I'll show you how that'll work. So we're going to pick our go-to Evergreen Ventures. So if our regular price is 114.52, you'll notice how I can leave that open and go back to this window without being locked out of it. So we're going to say that the price for Evergreen Ventures is $10 off about, and if they order 20 boxes or more, or 10 boxes will make it, then we'll give them another discount on that. So we have both customer and quantity there. So now when we look at the price matrix for that, we see those two entries there. And uh, we're going to add one more, I think, to show how that works without a customer in it. Okay, so here is a price matrix entry without a customer. So we're just going to say if anybody buys 20 or more of these, they will get a price discount. Okay, now we have our price matrix set up for that. Let's see how that looks. So you can see we're already on Ever 428. And already that uh, price has come through and it highlights green showing that's a special price uh, based on the price matrix. -y. And if I switch the customer, you can see it goes away right away. I don't have to re-enter the line or refresh. It immediately picks it up. Um, you can see once I hit 20, because we made that entry for no customer getting a discount after 20, they get the discount as soon as they hit 20. But if I go back to Evergreen, that'll drop down again because they have a discount related to their customer. So very handy for, instead of making a code per customer so that they have their own price, you can, you can use one code and just apply it to many customers. So we're gonna process payment on that and then I can come in and do a partial payment if I want, put some of it on account, some of it on Visa. Uh, very flexible in, in the way that it handles the financial side of the transaction. And then when that pops up, I have the choice to uh, print that off, send it to PDF or a variety of other exportable formats, including Excel, text. So instead of printing this off to PDF or emailing it as PDF, I can do that directly out of here when I, when I make the invoice. And so that will look... Uh, the same as if we had just invoiced it, that sub dialog will pop up and show us our options for that, which are right there. So basically, you'd pick the report you want, and then instead of hitting preview or print, we would hit email. And this gives us the contacts on the account to pick from, or we can type one in manually as well. And the real time saver is the templates. So these templates will allow us to pull from fields within the software to give us a customized um, template to send out to people so that we're only typing a couple of words each time, if any. So you can see when I hit the preview, it shows me what they would be for this particular um, email. And I saw that that didn't have anything in it, so we'll just change that to pure later. Now it looks good. And then we would just send the email, and I like to have it BC to myself as well, so I know it went out. And it'll pop up saying email successful, and uh, skip the entire step of exporting it to PDF, opening your email software, and then attaching it to an outbound email. And then briefly, this is the point of sale module. 
And so uh, as far as somebody standing at a till uh, doing high volume of transactions, likely this is what they're using and scanning into it and, uh, and showing it on a, a perhaps a pole display or a monitor display. So you can have ads on it as well. That's what you're seeing on the left there that the customer would see. And then if you're halfway through this and you realize it's going to be a more complicated order, maybe something uh, that you're adding more to, we can just pop it over to order entry and it brings everything across. It brings our customer and all the items we've entered. Uh, so very versatile point of sale platform designed not to use the mouse. So very easy to use the keyboard in a scanner and quickly enter items and, and process them. So that is our quick overview of Spire features. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any questions, please contact us through our website, www.nics.ca. Thank you.